hello, uh, hello, welcome back to Everything Bites. I'm Hunter Moore, and my vibe has not yet been killed. Unknown Mortal Orchestra is a Portland, Oregon via Auckland, New Zealand band. The band, which began as a solo project of Nielsen's back in 2010, pretty much immediately found commercial and critical success with the release of the single Funny Friends. The band released their self-titled debut in 2011 on Fat Possum, and it was a smash hit in the worlds of indie rock and psych pop revivalism. At the time, the easy comparison was, of course, the other band that sort of broke out in the, in the realm of 60s nostalgia, Tame Impala. However, UMO was traversing a path that was decidedly more R&B and garage influenced. In 2012, UMO signed to Jag Jaguar Records, and in 2013 they put out their second album, Two. That record had some of my favorite singles of that year on it, including Swim and Sleep Like a Shark and So Good at Being in Trouble. Those songs and that record were marked by an earwormy combination of warm lo-fi production and catchy psychedelic inspired songs and hooks. As a listener and a casual fan of the band, I saw Nielsen's songwriting abilities improving and I hoped that on the next UMO record maybe he would venture into uncharted territory and try to get away from the sounds that he had been experimenting with on those first two records. I wondered if Nielsen would venture back into a noisier style of songwriting, that which was more prominent in his first band, The Mint Chicks. I also found myself wondering if the next UMO record would maybe be a little bit more accessible, a little dancier. I didn't really know what would come of it. Well now, the new record, Multi Love, is out, and I suppose I was sort of right and wrong. The LP is dancier and certainly the most accessible thing that Nielsen has released so far in his career. However, the problems I have with this record are similar to those that I have with the first two UMO records. Mainly, that the album never comes together into a cohesive whole, and that Nielsen's songwriting always feels a little lackluster. That being said, there are some really great songs here, some real gems, specifically in the first half of the album. Multi Love begins with the title track, which is pretty much the perfect beginning to the album. Ruben Nielsen is sounding more passionate than ever. His vocals are really interesting here. They kind of reminded me of maybe like Wes Miles of Ra Ra Riot, just kind of reaching into that upper register without totally going full falsetto. The following two songs are pretty interesting too, uh, like Acid Rain, has a vocal performance from Nielsen that sort of reminded me of like a Macy Gray or a Tina Turner and the song Your Life One Night has, uh, as, as a lot of the songs on this album do, has this really really um, superb uh, propulsive disco beat and some, some very uh, ethereal production that I like a lot. All these songs at the beginning of the album and especially the next one, Can't Keep Checking My Phone which was the first single off this record. They're some of the catchiest songs that Nielsen has written, and his vocal performances on these songs are evidence that his voice has slowly but surely improved over the last several years. Can't Keep Checking My Phone has some of the sweetest vocal melodies on the entire record, and the production style and the beat lend themselves to extreme remix potential. There's a really propulsive rhythm, a really great backbeat, some super disco-y, like I mentioned before, disco-y uh, atmosphere going on. It's, it's, it's a great song. I can tell that Nielsen, in his production style and his uh, instrumental and vocal delivery, he's probably influenced by a lot of post-punk and new disco and synth-pop, especially that of the late 70s and early 80s. And that's great. It, it's pretty much what I wanted out of this project, uh, given that the first two records are way more indebted to 60s psych and 70s rock than than this record is. Though Multi Love is probably the most cohesive project that Nielsen and his band have released thus far, I can't really ignore my quibbles with this album, which are kind of the same problems that I had with the first two records, and that's just that I, I'm really only liking about half of the album here. I like the production, it's really warm, and it sounds like it was maybe recorded to tape or something. I don't know if that's a manipulation that they did in post, but it, sound, it sounds great. It sounds great through the whole record. It seems maybe influenced by some more contemporary dance pop, maybe some like Disclosure or Aluna George or Future Islands. Songs like The World is Crowded, which has some really nice uh, synth strings on it, and it kind of reminded me of um, 
maybe like a darker Wild Nothing song, kind of that disco-y dream pop feel. But at the end of the day, I'm just not really digging this this set of songs in the in the latter half of the album. So songs like like that one, songs like Stager Screen, uh, Necessary Evil, which sounds like something that could have could have been on the last album by by these guys. That being said, it it has one of the most intriguing closers. Uh, that I've heard in a while. It's called Puzzles, and it kind of sounds like an infusion of Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of Love Roller Coaster with Bex Debra from Midnight Vultures, which I suppose kind of makes sense because UMO actually covered Beck for um, their 2013 EP Blue Record. They covered his song <laughs> Putting It Down, which is a really crazy deep cut from his Stereopathic Soul Manure album from like 94. So I guess it kind of it kind of all makes sense and they're, they're clearly influenced by artists that didn't necessarily come out of the 60s, 70s, or 80s. Which is great. However, I still feel like Nielsen kind of wears his influences on his sleeve a little too much. Um, I don't think they're gonna garner, with this album, I don't think they're gonna garner as many comparisons to you know, Tame Impala or or some of the other more contemporary uh, psychedelic bands. But for their fourth record, I hope Nielsen and UMO maybe do something a little bit more fleshed out, uh, something that feels a little bit more together and, and not as disjointed. Um, I think this record is, is my favorite that they've released so far. I think it's uh, the, the most to the point that they've been, but um, I can't help feeling like the songs on the back half of this thing are a little underwritten. I think I'm feeling about a 6 out of 10 on this record, but let us know what you thought. Uh, have you listened to the new Unknown Mortal Orchestra? Um, what else have you been listening to? What have you been doing? I've been gone for a couple of years. Do you think I don't know that? Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I'm Hunter Moore. This has been Multi Love by Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Everything bites. Yon yon new one. And I and I and this episode is brought you like by Tano Tano. And 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 and, and Juji fruits. And Juji glue. And Juji. It's Juji glue. It's Juji glue. <laughs> it's in my bones. It burns. It's in my bones. It's in my bones. <laughs> it's in my bones. <laughs> my name is Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Everything bites.